Peace to the family. Little nigga activity to start it up. I don't know how much of that you caught. But it must come to an end. The Nick Rowe music must come to an end. Royalty is the order of the day. And I am here to give you a presentation on why the coronavirus is the best thing that could possibly happen to us if we survive it. If provided we survive, the paradox is it can be one of the best things that has happened to us in quite some time. I'm going to type in the information for class this Sunday. <clears throat> Peace of the family. Make sure y'all go on that Instagram, man. I had a heck of a class today. So I just pinned it to the top. You know we got class tomorrow, 6 p.m. Eastern time at imbrotherpolite.app. You can pay for the class and register there. It's going to be an amazing class. Dang, we almost had a thousand people already. All right, let me just let me just get to the point. I don't want to waste you people time. <clears throat> Apparently, you know what you're about to get. So the talk has been what we were supposed to discuss last time. I spoke with y'all on Facebook. <clears throat> was the options. And so when we talk about an options contract, we're talking about the ability to own 100 shares into the future. That's what we're talking about. And what I want you to realize, there's a correlation between real estate and the stock market, especially when it comes to options. So you have the fair market value and you have the assessor's value, right, or the assets value of a property. <clears throat> and the fair market value is based on the general value of a property as agreed upon amongst buyer and seller. The gone rate for what a property is. But then you have the municipalities that come in and they have a judgment or perspective about what the property is worth and they do it based on a number of factors, one of which being comps. So they compare the property to similar properties in retrospect to property taxes and other scenarios. So generally, the assessed value of real estate will be lower than that of the FMV, which would be the fair market value. Well, when you're dealing with stocks, you're dealing with relatively something similar, right? Which would be the intrinsic value and the extrinsic value. So you can liken that to the fair market value and assessed value, intrinsic value, and extrinsic value. When you buy your option, the dollar amount that you buy it for represents the premium. And if you were to execute your right to trade or purchase, that would be your intrinsic value. But then you have the extrinsic value, which is a price that's based on the volatility of the market, time and its interest and the further you get into time the closer you get towards the maturation date of your investment as far as the option is concerned that's called time decay or theta decay and i know these concepts might be a little foreign but i'm saying this because i have to speak to different people at the same time so i'm going to switch the conversation to some of the verbiage i mean keep the conversation i'm gonna switch some of the verbiage but i'm saying some of this because there's different people at different levels that's going into my class. And there's different people at different levels that are already presently in the class. So I got to speak to them because people are getting becoming more accelerated in their understanding as they take in the class. All right. And I'm just prepping people for class tomorrow. That's what the real prep is. This is prep for class tomorrow because we're not going to play no games tomorrow. It's going to be very intense. So get as much as information as possible. So I've been putting out a lot of free information so people can practice. So when they get into the course, they don't have to waste too much time finding out what do I mean. All right, so let's keep that in mind. Why is the option so important? Well, let's liken it to real estate. I'm going to use real estate to teach you about options. And if you're not too familiar with what's going on in real estate, then you'll get a two for one deal right now. So let's start. I want to buy a property that's $500,000. Take notes. That's all you got to do or play this back. <clears throat> Don't worry about it. Classes tomorrow, you go to imbrotherpolite.app and you pay. It's $99 for the class. All right. You already missed the first 
session. This is going to be the second session. You're already going to get it by default. The second you pay, you automatically. There's an automated system that gives you your links and your PDF. It's going to give you all of that so you can view it and catch up. You can move at your own pace, but tomorrow is going to be the real deal. Because that was a preliminary. That was for the neophyte. That was for the novice. But I still integrated a lot of things for people that's more accelerated. But right now, <clears throat> let's do real estate slash option trading. The way I'm going to teach you option trading is by teaching you some real estate. Because we got to make that analogy. So just like you have the fair market value and this SS value, you have the intrinsic value and the extrinsic value. Don't let that boggle your mind. Do not let that befuddle you. Walk with me in this manner. Let's really get focused. There's a $500,000 house that I want to purchase. And I got reason to believe that this $500,000 property will appraise for more in the future. Let's say $800,000. I believe that this property is going to appraise for $800,000 in the near future. And if I hold out long enough, it'll appraise for more than that long term. So I get a purchase agreement and I get a purchase agreement for, let's say, $20,000. I got to put $20,000 down. Well, pardon me. I get a purchase agreement stipulating that the owner can or the seller cannot sell that property for 90 days. I have exclusive right to generate my revenue, wait for the wire to come in, whatever the case may be. I got exclusive right. I got 90 days to purchase this property and they cannot solicit this property or entertain anybody's zealousness towards purchasing this property. It is exclusive to me for 90 days. But in order for me to get this exclusive right per the purchase agreement, I have to pay $20,000 down and I have to be willing to pay $20,000 under the pretense that if I do not execute this sale, if I do not conduct this transaction inside of the frame of 90 days, I have to be willing to walk away from that $20,000. That's called the earnest money deposit. In stocks, this would be called the premium. The purchase agreement would be called the option which would be the actual contract. And the $500,000 would be the strike price. Walk with me. So the property costs $500,000. If this was stocks, that'd be the strike price. I want to get into an agreement that based on a certain period of time, this agreement will meet a maturation inside that period of time where I have the right to actually purchase this property. That'd be your option agreement. That'd be your option contract. And then the dollar amount that I put down to secure this agreement for the future, to have the right in between that day and 90 days, to have the privilege of purchasing this property at $500,000. That right there is called the premium. Now we got two things going on and I got to be willing to walk away from that $20,000 that I put down in the event that I don't buy the property inside of 90 days because it's an earnest money deposit. So the stipulation is per the purchase agreement that if I don't act on it, I lose the 20 grand. Now, any of a number of things can happen. What if... All of a sudden, there's a rapist in the community. What do I do if there's a rapist in the community all of a sudden? <clears throat> then there's a riot because they think the black man did it. And then the, the Jews attack the black man. And all this confusion is going on. It's like Crown Heights back in the days in New York. Where it was the riots amongst the black people and the Jews. That causes the property to be devalued. Now the property is down from $500,000 to three hundred and fifty dollars Nobody wants to move into that neighborhood. It's just way too much negativity going on. Inside of that 90 days, I'm nearing the 90 days. And guess what I say at this particular point? 
it ain't even worth the investment that it was going to be worth. I had reason to believe it was going to be valued $300,000 more in or around in the near future, but now the damn property is $150,000 lower. The agreement says I have to buy it $500,000. So what does this mean? Am I forced to pay the additional $130,000? Because, I mean, pardon me. Am I forced to pay the $500,000 minus the twenty dollars Because I put $20,000 down. It went $150,000 cheaper based on the market value. It's $150,000 lesser than it was prior. So my $500,000 property is now $350,000. And I'm like, yo, I put 20 grand down. Do I still buy it for the $500,000, even though it's devalued at 350 grand? Or do I walk away with the $20,000 loss because that's the name of the game? Well, as hard as it is to stomach this, we realize what's the smart thing to do here. We realize the intelligent thing to do is to walk away from the $20,000. The intelligent thing to do is to say, I did put $20,000 up, but I'm not going to buy the $500,000 property knowing that in that time frame, it is now lesser than $150,000. I'd rather lose the twenty dollars than to commit to the $500,000 knowing that the damn property won't appraise for more. In fact, it's been devalued at $150,000. Make sense? Y'all walking with me? Keep in mind that the purchase agreement that stipulates what the maturation date is, that's likened to an option. Keep in mind that the amount of money I paid for the agreement is likened to the premium for the option contract. Keep in mind the $500,000 that the property cost is considered the strike price, it would be likened to the strike price on the stock market. And the FMV or fair market value and the SS value, the analogy can be made to intrinsic value and extrinsic value. Just walk with me, take the terms and walk with me. That's all you gotta do. Doesn't even matter if it doesn't make sense all the way. Because the more you hear this information, you go, wow, I got it. Here's some more scenarios though. So we got a purchase agreement to buy this $500,000 property inside of 90 days. And I had to put an earnest money deposit down, EMD of 20 grand that I have to be willing to walk away from if I don't purchase the $500,000 property. But here's another scenario. What if the property ends up being worth $700,000 out of nowhere? I'm anticipating 800 grand, but in that 90 days, the value goes up to $700,000. It goes up $200,000 more. Well, I don't have to pay $700,000 because I paid for an agreement that's exclusive to me to have the right to purchase it for $500,000. So despite the fact that the property value went up, which is a plus, I got the right to buy it for $500,000. And I already put $20,000 down. That means that agreement into the future created a heck of an opportunity for me. Things is working out. But what if I thought I was gonna have all the money to buy this $500,000 property that's now worth $700,000? What if I thought I was gonna have the money, but my lawsuit money didn't come in? My homie that said he was gonna go half with me with the house, he bailed out. He ain't even picking up his phone no more when he told me, yo, I could call him whenever I need to call him. And then I call him, and then he treated me like I'm harassing him when he told me to call him. Y'all know this stuff sounds familiar. And now this deal is about to slip out my hands. I'm on my last week and a half to two weeks. What then would I be able to do? What then might I be able to do? Well, walk with me. On the stock market, we could sell that contract for the same premium. When that money changes, the new premium, we do the difference and we win. In other words, if I pay $20,000 deposit for a $500,000 property that now appraises for 
700,000, which is $200,000 more. Even if I don't have the money to fulfill this transaction goal of $500,000, I can sell my $20,000 contract for about 40 or $50,000. Because even if I sell my agreement for $50,000 and make me a $30,000 profit, that person that buys this agreement is still making well over $100,000 because they're still gonna be able to buy the property for $500,000. And I'm selling them the contract instead of me purchasing the property. Well, on the stock market, you can do the same thing. You can invest in something for the future and you can sell the contract instead of conduct the transaction. Or you can execute the trade. You got two things you can do. Or three, you can walk away from it and let it let the contract expire worthless because it doesn't benefit you because you're out of the strike price. So in this particular case, as far as the real estate is concerned, we put a bid in for a property that's $500,000. And anything that goes over $500,000 as far as the value, that technically in the stock market jargon would be considered being in the money. Anything above the strike price, anything that is above the price that I go into the agreement for the future, if there's just one dollar above it, I'm in the money. That's how that would work. <clears throat> so let's just talk stocks right now. I hope that does something for people. I hope that did something for people. Okay? Now we're going to talk about a stock that is, let's say, $10. And I want to put my money into the future. I want to go into the future and say, you know what? I believe this stock is going to be $20 in the future. We live in a day and time right now where that is very practical. Because a lot of stocks are three, four, five, and more times lower than it's ever been. So, I can sit here and say, we well, you know what? I can look at some stocks that's five times lower than it normally is and say, I believe it's going to be two times higher a year from now. So, they say, well, since you put in an option so far into the future... Yo, man, we'll give you that for three cents. So I get a three cent option contract. And I place my bid or the strike price is at $20. The strike price is $20. I say that this $10 stock is going to be $20 in the far future. I say this stock is going to be 10 It's going to be $20 in the future. Call it a hunch. If people start getting on planes again and people start going on going into hotels and if people start going back on cruises I got great reason to believe that airlines stock is going to double even though they're five six seven times lower than what they normally be I just want to I think it's going to at least double that's just how I'm feeling so I put my bid in because if people can move around freely people are going to fly because people are Damn, they're claustrophobic right now. They're claustrophobic right now, not being able to move around the way they want to move. So I also believe the prices may even go up higher than what they normally used to be for a short stint. Because there will be an overcompensation period where people overindulge just from having the freedom to do things they used to do regularly. And that'll probably be in the second phase of this coronavirus freedom. So let's walk. You know, I, I can't play games when we do these presentations. I got to get straight to the talk. I got to get right to the business because I can't play with the gossip. I can't do that. It's too much on the line for our people and it's great opportunity. Classes is Sunday. I am Brother Polite. That's where it is. That's correct. P O L I J C. I actually put it to the top. I am Brother Polite. 
class is this Sunday, tomorrow, 6 p.m. Eastern time. And those of you that's in my course, if you've been in my course, you can let the people know what you're feeling about this course. Because I've seen y'all on the Instagram giving me a lot of props and a lot of praise, and I appreciate that. Thank you, family. Thank you. Thank you, family. <laughs> what is phase one? Laugh out loud. Oh, you might not know. You could type in on the internet and type in phase one coronavirus. And what they're doing, phase one, is to allow restaurants to reopen, but at 50% capacity. Phase two would be to allow bars to open and non-essential businesses to go. See? Laugh out loud, but I don't make these things up. You can look it up. And the reason why I know these things, because I feel like that's going to significantly impact the stock market. Because the sight of seeing things kind of go back to normal will make investors put money back into companies. That's why I'm aware of these things. See, when you join the class, it no longer becomes a laugh out loud moment. It becomes a, oh, the reason why we're interested in that type of current events or those type of current events is because it gives us a hint at what to invest in, what to sell and what to buy. Because if things go back to normal, some companies are going to go downward. The companies that went in an upward spiral are going to go in a downward spiral. So as a case in point, you got Zoom, a streaming platform that allows people to communicate with each other, several people at a time. And it's integrated with YouTube most often. People use it on their phone. It went from $40 six months ago to $160 during this coronavirus. I do presume a business of that type gaining so much success and momentum in this hour will not be able to sustain that same momentum in the hour to come. I believe when people are able to go back outside, companies like Netflix, Maybe not dramatically, but companies like Netflix, when people have a life again outside of staying in their house, a lot of Netflix subscriptions are going to be canceled. I just think it's a hunch. I could be wrong. So I'm constantly monitoring when it appears that things will semi go to normal so I can invest money on stocks based on the value going down and I can invest money on stocks based on the value value going upwards because you could put your money on stocks going down you could put your money on stocks going up i could put my money as an option i could put my money on a, a 20 dollars stock possibly going down to 15 dollars and anything after that 15 dollars puts me in the money because i will have the right to still sell it for a higher price even though the stock is cheaper on the market and that's called selling the puts selling the put option i know you're like yo hold on so if the stock goes down to eight dollars because you put a bid in for the stock to go down at least to 15 that once it goes past 15 you're in the money and even if the stock goes down to let's say eight dollars you can sell it for 15 and it can be sold? Yes, because that's the name of the contract. That is the name of the contract. I can sell the stock for $15, even though the going rate for it at that time is $8. Because in the past, I invested in this future. Hope y'all walking with me. <clears throat> Bull and bear market, that's right. And that's a bearish, that's called a bearish assumption. It's a bearish assumption if you believe the market is going to be down and you're going to invest in that. Or you believe a stock is going to be down and you invest in that. And it's a bullish assumption if you believe the value of a stock is going to go higher. The reason why I take my time to teach this, because if you start from scratch by yourself, I'm not saying you incompetent. I'm saying when they taught us math, they could have used these things, real life scenarios that we could connect with. Oh, 
I, I could see me making money off of that. If we were children in school learning this, it'd be easier to assimilate now. But then again, from pre-K to 12th grade is 14 years of school, and you don't learn nothing about credit. You don't learn about being a first-time homeowner. And you don't learn. About what? You don't learn about purchase agreements, earnest money deposits, UCC. You don't learn about none of these things, do you? It's so weird that by the time you hear a 10th grade dropout, such as myself talking about it, there's a complex there. There's a defense mechanism. Because first of all, this brother is an admitted 10th grade dropout. He has no degrees. How come the people with degrees didn't teach us this? What business does he have sharing this information and how could it be accurate? Even if you can go look it up, you ain't got to go to the library in this day and time. You got Google. You got 4G or 4LTE, which is slow, but it's still a lot faster than what our ancestors had. Our most immediate ones who didn't have a www dot to press. Walking with me. So let me talk to y'all. This is some real talk, man. So I say I want to invest in the future. And because I'm willing to invest in the future, I can pay for the right to own. That's the key thing. Ownership is what I'm talking to you about. I got the right to own into the future a company or multiple shares in a company for pennies on a dollar. This is why I teach pennies off of millionaires. And they may say, yo, here's a three cent option for you. An option is a hundred shares. An option is 100 shares. That's what an option is, 100 shares. And so, because I'm buying at such a distance apart, Since I'm buying on such a difference, such a distance, so deep into the future, they give me the right to own a hundred shares at three cents. Three cent option. So that means a three cent option means that I'm paying three dollars to own those hundred shares because it's three cents times a hundred. Walking with me? If it was thirty, if it was a thirty cent option, that would mean I'm paying thirty cents for the right to own 100 shares into the future. And that would be $30, could that be 30 cents times 100? So an option is 100. And when you purchase an option contract, the premium, which is what the option contract is worth, is that number times 100. So let's say I buy a three cent option. It's now, three dollars if everything goes to hell people how much money do i lose in the future whether it's three months away five months away if everything goes to hell how much money did i lose i lose three dollars you see when people say it's the, the stock market is too volatile you can't trust what's going on in the stock market yo fam you really gonna get in my way if the people lose three dollars but what if they're in the money. What if they was correct? Then they have the right to 100 shares and to sell it for the price that they believe it to be and sell it for that difference or for that dollar amount to its greatest advantage. Meaning, <clears throat> The stock can be $80, but because I made my investment into the future and I, cre I identified or created a designated price that's called the strike price. If I say it's going to be $8 and the damn thing is $80, then I have to have, I have the right to those 100 shares, which I have the right to this agreement at $8 times 100 shares, but I don't have to actually pay $8 times 100, 
until I get close into the future or, or I say, yo, it's more profitable for me to spend my $8 times 100, which is $800, and sell it for the going rate of $80 per share in the market, which is $8,000, and I make a $7,200 profit. And a $3 investment put me in that space. This is hypotheticizing. The numbers is gonna be different. The opportunity is gonna be different because you might execute the right to trade early. But then there's other instances where purchasing the shares itself may not be the most profitable. So what you may do instead is sell the contract itself because the contract, you might have paid three cents for the contract or you might have paid 30 cents for an option contract, which is $30, right? And the contract, let's say it goes up to 60 cents. So that means you make $30 difference between the two. Now, I don't know how much option contracts you may have bought. Because generally, you don't just buy one. You might buy 10 option contracts and spend $300. Because each option is 100 and you get the option contract for $0.30 cents right now to pay for it in the future. So you're paying $30 per contract. You buy 10 of those contracts, you spend $300. However, it doubles in value in the future. The extrinsic value created the situation. If you sold it for what it's worth at 30 cents, a share, that's $30. That's your intrinsic value based on that premium at that moment. But the extrinsic value is to be determined as you get into the future based on the market volatility, based on the interest and based on time decay or theta decay as you get closer and closer to your maturation date, as you get closer and closer to the expiration, extrinsic value plays an integral role. I hope you walk with me. And so, this being the case, if I spend 30 cents per option contract for 10 option contracts, that's 30 times 100, which is $30, times 10 times this is $300 but as I go into the future the stock is doing good so because the stock is doing good guess what's going to happen it might be worth 70 cents I bought it for 30 cents the new premium 70 cents because the stock is doing good and the time is closer so they have to raise the amount of money the closer you get to the stock and it's profitable, it's going to cost more money for the premium. So I can sell it for the same rate I got it for. So instead of the 30 cents for our option, which is $30 a share for the 10 options that I bought at $300, I can now say, well, you know what? It's now going for 70 cents. The option contract is 70 cents, which means $70 to pay for the option and we're going to multiply that by 10 which is $700 which means this 30 cent contract makes me what a $400 difference I can sell the contract or I can execute my right to trade by buying the shares and then selling them now the difference between this and real estate we don't have to sit here and wait for a buyer because of these contracts, all you have to do is press buy or sell. <coughs> Real talk. <laughs> Real talk. Real talk. So what I'm saying to my good brothers and sisters, own the future. What is too expensive now, you can set the stage to be able to pay for it later on. This is not me selling you anything but my class. This is me putting you on that you know you can own the future for pennies of a dollar. If you really just assimilate what I'm saying. And if it ain't making sense, watch the video again, watch the video again, watch the video again. I appreciate you too. Thank you, John. John Q. Mitchell. 
we don't have time to play. Not do this. <clears throat> That's what's up, John. You made your money. That's what's up. See? Everybody is an expert. Teach them the basics, but like, you can't jump into trading. Let me explain something. When you're teaching people information, you teach them what you are interested in. I'm not you. You go on your platform, and I mean this respectfully, go on your page and teach what is important to you. But I need my people to understand ownership, and I need them to understand you can pay pennies to own into the future. I need them to know such a reality exists so they can be motivated to say, let me study this. Now, if I say I do have a class, if I say the first session deals with some of the nuances, however, it caters to the novice, but there's something there for people at every level. What else do you want me to do during this stream? There's a class designated for it. So what I'm doing is compartmentalizing. Sometimes I might talk about index funds. Sometimes I might talk about put options and call options. Sometimes I may talk about leap options. Sometimes I may talk about swing trading. Sometimes I may talk about day trading. Where do we really start when no one told us anything to start with? What is the best place to start with for people who don't know none of it. They only heard of it. And from what they heard, most of us are scared. Yo, I just, it's too risky. You take these same options, because this is a conversation. You know, I hold the gun in my hand to drive a point home about health. And I start off and I, 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 I posit myself as a madman who's out of control and got the gun. Now, mind you, if people watch the camera work, you can tell it's a drone. Now, I even post the video because I got the behind the scenes video when I did my health video. And you know what people did? They ignored all the information about lysosomes, endocytosis, exocytosis lipid membranes, RNA viruses, <clears throat> hemoglobin, special protein responsible for the uptake of oxygen so it can be distributed to the rest of the body by way of the blood. They ignored all this information. Yo, the gun, come on, bro. I can't even hear anything you said. I felt like you was gonna shoot me through the screen. Why are you not putting your finger? Why is your finger by the trigger? Cause I'm making a statement. I was making a statement. And you know what people do? You know what people do? They do this. <clears throat> when you watch a movie, do you tell them hold the gun for gun safety so everyone can clearly see that you're not you're practicing gun safety? Or when you watch the movie, it would be very annoying to see people making sure they're not putting their fingers on the triggers. If I watch a movie and it's supposed to be an action movie, I want a goddamn refund if I see them practicing gun safety during a damn action flick. But when I do it, yo, you gotta practice gun safety. That is not the point. It was part of a demonstration. So they missed the message because every brother had to let everyone know that they secretly are a Rambo. They secretly talk weapons. They secretly bust their gun all the time. And now it's time to come out when I'm doing my thing to tell everybody, yo, he ain't got his finger on it. Oh my gosh, I can't believe this. I can't pay attention. I was ducking on the live stream. I thought he was going to shoot me. He was going to shoot the camera woman. There was no camera woman, first of all. And for that particular demonstration, it did not suffice for me not to put my finger on the trigger. It sufficed for me to put my finger on the trigger because that was my demonstration. Just like in a movie demonstration, it don't suffice for them to not put their finger on the damn trigger. But you miss the message all the time. So I go and I teach these about these stocks. 
And the first thing people want to do is tell you about gun safety when it comes to stocks. When it comes to stocks, yo, don't trade yet. Yo, it's too volatile. Yo, you can lose money. Yo, fam, if y'all was that concerned about this subject matter, we go on your page and we see nothing but videos about it. Why is everybody an expert when I start teaching? I wouldn't even be teaching on this if it was popular information. Because when I do my live streams, I go on my way to share what may not be popularly known or what is not popularly known. <clears throat> the class you go to IamBrotherPolite.app is right there pinned to the top of this screen right here. You should see it with my logo right here. It's I am Brother Polite app. Class is tomorrow at 6 p.m. Class is tomorrow at 6 p.m. <clears throat> yeah. I'm, I know it's sad we have to say it, but we got to do it because sometimes people don't get it. So what I'm saying is you can also <clears throat> hedge the bet. Yeah, you can take the class on the phone. Definitely could take the class on the phone. And again, with the deviations, send us everywhere except for where we are at. Thank you, brother. Well worth it. I appreciate that. It's supposed to be three classes. I feel like I'm going to do five. I do five, that means the two is extra. It's supposed to be three. Real talk. Real talk. Now I gotta I gotta respond to what people say. Um or look at what people are saying. <clears throat> Let me see. Thank you, Catherine. And like I said, people don't go out their way. To teach us this, your own brothers and sisters have betrayed you. Your own brothers and sisters have betrayed you. Because with your valuable time, they speak to you about gossip. They don't take a day off to say, hey, you know what? Let me share something with you to help you pay your bills. And if you have the opportunity to communicate with a lot of people at a time. It's incumbent that if you can't provide that information during this day and time, you find somebody. You don't knock them, you find somebody. And you get them to share it when you get the opportunity to do so. If you ever took one of Polite's classes, UK is about to be lit. <laughs> Thank you, Lowski. The class info is definitely on the website. Do not go to the app. Go to the website. It's called .app. It's a website. Go to IamBrotherPolite.app. <clears throat> okay? IamBrotherPolite.app. That's where the class is for tomorrow. People want to talk to you about losses. Once you win, how the heck can you ever lose? I got to do this demonstration. I got to show you if there's a stock for a dollar and I take $500, I have 500 shares and that stock go up 20 cents because throughout the day it's going up and down, up and down. I find the stocks that stay within a realm of 20 or 15, I should say. I stay within a realm. Well, my, my, my motto is 10 cents. You all understand why I say 15 later, but let me say this. Stocks that fluctuate from 10 to 40 cents at a time. <clears throat> That's a wide window. I'm okay if it's 10 cents. I'm okay if it's 15. I'm okay if it's 20. My focal point is 20 cents. If the stock is $1 and I pay for 500 shares, I spend $500. If the $1 stock goes up 20 cents, how much money did I make? How much 20 cents are in $8, one fifth? 20 cents is one fifth of a dollar. So if I have $500, that's five over one, that's one over five, I made $100, 20 cents at a ton. And if I trade on every 10 cents, 
I made $50 for my $500. If I put it in the bank, it do nothing for me. If I leave it in the bank for six months, it still does nothing for me. If I leave it in the bank for 10 years, I might see half a penny. But if I find me any of a number of hundreds of thousands of stocks that have the tendency, especially in this hour, this market is so volatile as people keep telling you it's too dangerous, it's up and down, you can't trust it, then you're using the wrong strategy. Why don't you day trade? Why don't you swing trade? If it's too inconsistent and it's too up and down and you don't know what to expect, no, nah, everything's on decline. So why don't you purchase a put option? Why don't you sell a put option? Or why don't you purchase one? Why don't you buy one? Since you know what's going down. You see, I don't get people. And I do get them. You're just saying what people say. But I can tell you uneducated. We all should learn this. Whether you use it or not, you should learn it so you know it's available to you. So when these times come, oh, this is the perfect time. There's always a perfect time for something. There's always a perfect time for real estate and things going on. This is a perfect time for tax liens. Because when the economy get right, <clears throat> all the tax liens that you purchase, that people default in, that is to say, the redemption period has expired and you can execute your right as a first priority lien holder to take your percentage on the lien or own the actual property if no one redeems you could be out here playing monopoly this is the perfect time for tax liens <clears throat> and in another month or two it's going to be even better time for tax liens in another three four months five months it's probably going to be the golden era because so many people ain't gonna be able to pay for their past due delinquent property taxes that the properties will be forfeited to you just for paying the property taxes. Because in tax liens, you get the property for the amount equal to in back taxes. So if the property is $250,000 and you paid the $900 past due delinquent property tax, if nobody redeems, that is to say, pay for that $900 past due delinquent property tax plus the late fees, penalties, and the surcharges, if no one redeems. You get the property for the amount equal due in back taxes, not the amount of the actual property itself. So if the property is $250,000, you're going to get the property for $900. Of course, you have to pay for the right to execute the foreclosure. That might be $1,800. So altogether, you pay $2,700 for something that's $250,000. In American history... What time period were the most millionaires birthed? What time period were the most millionaires born? In the 1920s during the Great Depression. And in the 1920s during the Great Depression, I must ask you, how did the economy look? Well, the economy looked just like it looks right now. Near identical. So stands to reason, if we check what were the reasons why so many people became millionaires, and those circumstances run concurrent with now, then we have no reason not to understand where our potential lies. <clears throat> understand, businesses are closing. It's gonna be easier to purchase bankrupt businesses. Understand it's gonna be easier to invest in startups. Understand equipment that used to be expensive to purchase. Barbershop, beauty salons, Restaurant, that equipment's going to be on sale. Understand the storefronts with the, equip, with the equipment in there will be available. <clears throat> if you can just find something that makes you money. Oh my gosh, if you can just find something that makes you a little money. You can play Monopoly all across the board. And when this mess semi-subsides six months to two years from now, you will be in route to being a story where everybody's struggling and somehow you made your million or you made your six figures. All you got to do is study history. You don't believe me? It's perfect. Go look it up and see what year in American history 
What years in American history were the most millionaires birthed? They conspired in the 1920s so they could be millionaires inside of five to 10 years from there. Many of them were birthed inside of the same year, the year after, and the year after that. Well, all of them rose inside of the decade because while everything was on decline, they were on the rise because they was investing. <clears throat> the stocks are so cheap, what used to be $200 is now $25. What was $92 is now $6. When they say the market is bad, who's it bad for? It's for the people that was able to afford $300 a share. It's bad for the people that was able to afford $500 a share. It's not bad for the people who now can get it for five or eight dollars. They're doing that to you because if poor people knew the potential of their spending power on the economy, they would all be investing in these companies. We would be out of this situation, but the wealthy would be the poor people. And the poor people and the wealthy people will have to come to terms with their new reality. They won't necessarily be poor, but they'll be middle class or something like that. And it, and it would, that would be the equalizer. If they want us out of this situation, they could just teach poor people, which make up the larger percentage of the American populace, because over 95% of us make less than $150,000 a year. <clears throat> so if over 95% of us make less than $150,000 a year, not us as in black people, us as in America, right? Then over 95% of the people don't have conventional knowledge of stocks. All they know is it's too risky. Every era is always too risky. You mean there's never a period where stocks ain't that risky? People gonna tell you stocks is risky? In every era, <clears throat> people gonna tell you the real estate tax lien tax D business is risky in every era? Then they're lying to you. I'm not gonna be the one afraid to tell you, yo, listen, I hear the risk, the biggest risk you take is sitting here doing nothing because the world's gonna be hell. We're not gonna be able to recover from this <laughs> and know in two, three months, things will go back to normal, you're gonna go back to work. It, we're not gonna be able to recover from this. All the money that's been missing from people getting gas in their cars. You know they got to store gas. You know it diminishes as it's just sitting there. You don't think people would have stockpiled gas a long time ago just to have it at their disposal? That crude oil is no longer becoming a necessity because people are not driving to work every day. People are not driving to the movies. People, Uber's canceled in a lot of places. Lyft is canceled in a lot of places. Crude oil has gone down. Cruise lines cannot leave their docks. They can't let their boats leave their docks. <clears throat> the biggest risk you can take right now is doing nothing and thinking that when they say everything's back to normal, your life is going to be normal. You used to be able to get a house for, uh, with a 580 credit score and they just beat you in the head and set you up so you could go into default. At least you have the house for a good five years or so. <laughs> but now look at you. <clears throat> 640 will be the new 580. Why? Because this forbearance that they're giving people the right to not pay for their property for six months. Who's going to really have the money after six months of not paying for their property when they had no income in the first place during those six months? Other than these late ass checks or these fugazi ass tax credit checks that simply mean next year we're going to deduct that amount off your taxes. <laughs> it's a tax credit. Yo, listen, they paying you back in your own money and you thinking that they got that from some special bank, some central bank. No, that's to bail out the bigger businesses. <laughs> you stealing some other shit. 
That's to bail out the bigger businesses. <clears throat> I want y'all to really think. It's not a game out here. It's not a game out here. You need to be prepared. Because when the transition comes, you don't need to start thinking three months from now, six months from now, provided things start being fairly normal, it'll never be normal again. <laughs> it'll never be normal again. I hope y'all understand. It will never be normal again. Not in no two years will it be normal again. Unemployment is at an all-time high. People are not just going to be reemployed. Businesses barely can keep track of what they got going on. Do you know people are still paying to maintain a business that doesn't work? Do you understand what unemployment is doing to business owners? Do you understand when you tell people they don't have to pay their rent or they don't have to pay their mortgage and they don't realize they have to pay it after the forbearance, you have to pay it after the six months, you have to pay it after the three months. And you know those people won't be able to pay it. Will you have responsible people who also won't be able to pay it? What do you think lenders are going to do? They're going to make it harder to get a house. They're going to raise the criteria. They're going to raise the interest rates. And it's going to be more difficult to be approved for a loan or for a mortgage. Because they will realize the state and condition of the economy and the least likeliness of people being able, for, being able to fulfill their debt obligation. But Brother Polite was over here telling you how you could buy the property for the amount equal due and back taxes. Because depending on what city and state you're in, <clears throat> people worry about the mortgage and they never consider their property taxes. If you're behind in your mortgage, most times people are behind in their property taxes. The property taxes is way more important. <clears throat> the lease is shorter on property taxes than it is mortgage. And so, say a place like New Jersey has a two-year redemption period, the right you have to go delinquent and paying your property taxes before they have the right to solicit your debt, before they have the right to sell your debt by issuing a, and debt a debt obligation or an encumbrance called the tax lien. And they solicit this tax lien. And they say, whoever buys this person's past due delinquent property taxes for the last two years, because you have two years to redeem. And if you don't redeem, then the person who purchased the lien can get that money back plus the percent that they were promised on the lien in addition to late fees, penalties, and surcharges. So in America, you're going to make anywhere between 15, 36% on average with these tax liens when you follow my methodology, but it's going to be even lighter work in this day and time. And so if nobody redeems, you have the right to accept your percentage, which might be 15 or 20% the amount of money you put in. So if I put up 20% and I put up $1,500, I'm getting $300 plus I'm getting late fees, penalties, surcharges. And that's going to bring it up to about 500 in or around, which ain't bad. Because <clears throat> that brings me to 33.333%. Roughly. That ain't bad if I bought a bunch of those and I annuitize it and I make my business on a month-to-month -month basis. But hold on, let's think, let's slow down. If nobody redeems, then they give me the $300,000 property for the $1,500 taxes that I paid. You get the property if the person don't pay the taxes. Listen to me. <clears throat> Listen to me carefully. Even when this market goes to hell, you could be the one playing Monopoly. And you get that property, you could turn it into a halfway house for people that's being released from prison because a whole bunch of them is being released and have been released from prison due to the coronavirus. I don't think you realize the hustle. 
There's always a hustle no matter what time you're in. I'm over here playing games with y'all, talking this talk. That's why I said personally, anybody that's listening to me <clears throat> and anybody that's taking my classes, you would have to be a complete idiot. And I'm talking that talk. You would have to be a complete idiot. If you were broke or in despair, compromised economically in any way, after I've given all these free classes in addition to the paying one, because the paying one is when we crunch. <clears throat> what do you mean by annuitize? You know, people that get SSI or Social Security benefits, maybe because uh, they might have mental health issues or whatever the case may be. It's a recurring payment. So that's an annuity when you have a recurring payment. So the concept is if, if you invest in the same thing on a month to month basis, X amount of times per month, after about 18 months or so, you have created your own annuity where you can expect a consistent stream of monies coming in. And if you're reinvesting the principal and you're just extracting the interest, you successfully annuitize <clears throat> that asset or those assets. <clears throat> okay? So with options, if I can buy into the future, why won't I buy? And it's costing me pennies to buy into the future and I could just sell the contract and yeah, I may lose the, the $3 or the $30, but I may gain the world if I'm right. <laughs> so, and it's kind of hard not to be right <clears throat> because in a market that's so bearish, so down, you can only conceive that the future means that the market will be up. You could buy a leap option a thousand damn days from now. Do you know what that means? You could buy a leap option past three years from now <clears throat> or a little less. And so what I'm telling you is, I just want you to think about this. And I'm glad that you guys take this serious enough. <clears throat> I'm glad that you guys take this serious enough for the amount of people that's in here. Because we're grown adults for the most part on here, I hope so. But the youth can hear this. The youth can hear this. And y'all need to understand. <clears throat> we can't make no excuses. And ain't nobody give a damn about us. Nobody gives a damn about us, man. I hate to break the news to you. But people don't care about us, man. You got to take matters into your own hands in this day and time. You got to take matters into your own hands in this day and time. You can't make no exceptions and you can't make no excuses, especially those of you that got children that's relying on you. Those of you that have a spouse that's relying on you. And those of you that have enough self-respect where you got to rely on yourself. Don't accept failure as an option. You got plenty of options on the stock market that you can invest in. You don't need failure as one of them. Facts. True story. And like I said, I know I might be too dark to disseminate this type of stuff. I know I may be too dark to disseminate this information. And I know I may not have the best credentials, little to none, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or the validation from major white institutions. But my information checks out. And none of those guys cared to teach this to you for the 14 years they wasted of your life. Because it comes down to this. No matter how much years of schooling you had, it comes down to this. What does any of that information do to you or for you right now? <clears throat> i say it again. After all those years of school, after all the plaques, the paper you hung up on the wall, the cap and the gown, where the money at? Oh, you spent all those years to be in school, to be in the hospital so you could risk your life? <laughs> Salute to the people that's brave. But if you don't have a strong economic base set up, you got no business in that damn hospital. 
school didn't teach you that, you have uh, you gonna risk your life because you have to for the check. People be, oh man, they're heroes. Don't let them gas you. You ain't you ain't no fucking hero if <clears throat> you put yourself in a position to leave your children fatherless or motherless. And you don't even got an insurance policy that you pay for to ensure that if something happens to you, they get their half a million or their million dollars. You don't even have that in place. You don't have a life insurance or revocable trust. And you haven't assigned it to an insurance policy that you could benefit from, that you could borrow against. Because you didn't even know enough to call them and say, am I able to sell parts of this insurance policy? Or at best, will I be able to sell the policy itself in entirety? While I'm alive, can I benefit from my insurance while I'm alive? <clears throat> Can I access the cash value and take advantage of the death benefit while I'm alive? Enough with the broke ass insurance policies that we do get where we can only benefit if we're dead. That shit should be called the death insurance policy. I'm talking about life insurance where you can make money off it while you're alive. And I know this ain't the traditional black power rhetoric that we used to hear. I know it ain't the conventional theological debate about God and Jesus Christ that we used to hear. But at the end of the day, even the churches were shut down. Because <clears throat> after the pastor then laid his hands on everybody, it's against the law for him to conduct the laying of the hands. In fear, he may give you the virus. So what was we doing in the church the whole time? Was we bullshitting? Was that whole thing fake? Was everything they teaching us? Cap? He laid the hands and healed people. Everything from a common cold to the poverty they suffered from. And now it's against the goddamn law for him to put his hands on your forehead and mush your aunt and put her on the floor. He can't push your grandmother on the floor no more with those damn hands because he might infect you or he might have to do it if he, if he just put gloves on. Was they bullshitting this whole time? Make sure we social distance inside the church if we're going to remain open, though they ask, please keep them closed. Was they BSing? <clears throat> Was it all a lie? You put on your money and God we trust, but the second the virus come in town, all that shit out the window, and you start asking the churches, please keep them closed for people's safety. So you had grown people playing, pretending there, until a real situation. Then it's hard for people to adapt and adjust and transition, because now you done stripped them of the faith, you instilled in them from slavery. You taught us about this spook God. And then I go into the dictionary right now, y'all. You go in the dictionary and look up the word spiritualities. You can look up the word spiritualities. And what will y'all see? What will you see if you look up the word spiritualities? I wonder. Who knows? I know y'all be out here listening to me. <clears throat> Who knows what you're going to see? You're going to see... <clears throat> when you look up spiritualities you're going to see property acquired by the church or the clergy and the revenue thereof the real estate and the money that's made by the church is called spiritualities <clears throat> you give up the money and they spiritual what the hell you got what is that called when you give up your last money what is that called I know what it's called when they take your money. That's called spiritualities. That's the meaning of the word. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? That's the meaning of the word. Let me, let me pull this up. I ain't here to bang on your church stuff now. I'm just saying, was it all fake? I'm asking the government that. I'm not asking my people that. When I ask y'all that, it's, it's rhetorical. When I ask y'all that, it's rhetorical.
，OK。Real talk. When I ask you that, I ain't looking to knock anybody. Hold on, let's go here. Let's look up the word. <clears throat> Spiritualities, something such as property or revenue that belongs to the church or to the cleric. <clears throat> okay. Spiritualities, something such as property or revenue. That belongs to the church or to a cleric. <clears throat> what is that about, people? <clears throat> what is that about? And for the, <clears throat> just for y'all to know, the cleric is a, a high religious leader or a priest. <clears throat> so... They're conducting, <clears throat> they're conducting spiritualities. They're being spiritual when they buy real estate. They're being spiritual when they collect money. I ain't never knock nobody for doing what they do. That's not my game. You make your money however you choose to make it. I don't count people's pockets. I just want to know, what are you doing that's spiritual? See? Because I, I come here to preach to you the gospel. See, when I said money is my religion, they said I worship the money. But when people say Judaism is their religion, no one says they worship Judaism. When you say Islam is your religion, no one says you're worshiping Islam. But I say money is my religion. And we're slow. Bah! Short attention span. We so mad at money, we started creating equations that don't exist. You should ask. Who's the godhead of my religion? And I say the black woman. She is the progenitor of society. I bless my moms and every mother that comes behind her and all women who share the same ancestral mother for bringing us here to this very day. The least we can do is make suitable provisions for our women to create more conducive environments, especially understanding that when a woman is born, a woman is born with all the obey cells she will ever have. So a woman is born with all her potential children. And knowing that a woman is born with all her potential children tells me what? That every woman is a summation of the previous experience in the form of her mother. And at one point, three generations existed simultaneously because when your grandmother had your mother, you was there to potentially exist. So within a grandmother conceiving her child, there's three generations within that one womb. And every emotion that that grandmother goes through, her potential daughter goes through and their potential children. Every emotion, every circumstance that impacts the grandmother neurologically, anything that impacts the grandmother emotionally, transmigrates into her child to be and inadvertently impacts the future posterity of the children of that mom to be all in the womb and so this emotion is unrelenting this experience is perpetual and the only thing that I can do to reconcile this equation is to say let me create a powerful situation around myself where I can create the best environment I can to impact the psychology of the woman that will give birth to the nation so that's why I made money my religion. I don't worship no freaking money. It is an item that will be used to facilitate my goals, to empower fallen humanity, especially in the case of women, more especially in the case of women in particular. 
starting from the ones in my household and abroad. When I teach, this is so. Brothers can be in a better position to empower their family. When I teach, <clears throat> this is so. The sisters that's out there for Dolo, the sisters that are out there for Dolo, they can be in better position to empower their family. Y'all walking with me? I never said money's my God. Stop with the stupidness. I never once said it. Why you people always wanna, I told you money's my religion. You say you said money's your God. Shut up. <clears throat> it's like, yo, bro, if none of this information made any sense to you, why are you here? I just don't know why people turn the TV on to watch the show they don't like. Why do you go out your way? <clears throat> oh, look, fam. That show I hate with the nigga on it that I hate just as much as the show itself. Let's tune in and watch <clears throat> the whole thing for over an hour. I said the black woman is my God. Money's my religion. And you can be mad at money all you want. And you can make it what you want it to be. But Judaism teaches you how to worship the most high and islam teaches you how to worship their version of the most high and money teaches me how to worship my most high which is the woman the black woman it helps me facilitate my worship judaism helps you facilitate your worship islam helps you to facilitate your worship christianity helps you facilitate your worship this money helps me facilitate my worship. And worship means to have a high level of adoration or deep respect for that item of worship. In this particular case, it would be the woman. In my case, I have a great deal of respect and admiration. I adore the woman. I have a deep and profound respect for her. That's what worship means. I know you got these religious ideas in your head, but I'm telling you guys, you can look up any dictionary and you'll see it's not all that spooky stuff. It's to have a deep respect. And if worship means to have a deep respect, then I guess I worship my woman because I have a deep respect for her. You can't get mad at me for using words the right way because you've been using it the wrong way. You know what I'm saying? How you would be mad at me because I'm using the words right and because you got you fell in love with using the words wrong. <laughs> Don't make me have to do this. This is light work. <clears throat> Let's do it. If we really must. Let's do it. Y'all see this? What does worship mean? Let's do this. Hold on. Let's see what worship really means. Hold on. Let's do this. Worship means what? The feeling or expression. <clears throat> it's the feeling or expression of reverence and adoration for a deity. Let's make sure we understand what deity is so we don't make no mistakes. God or a goddess. God said the black woman is my God. Divine status. I believe black women have a divine status in society. That if I use the word deity, which is a synonym for the word God, I have the right to say then I render my woman as a deity or as a God because I have given onto her a divine status or quality or nature. <laughs> okay, now let's look up the word divine to make sure I'm not making a mistake of, from, or like God. So even if you believe in a most high God, we come from or are of God. Because like in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, 27, it tells you that let us make man in our image and after our likeness. So you must be of or from God. If I'm not making a mistake, this should still make sense to religious people. And in fact, your Bible in Psalms 82, 6 says, ye are gods and all ye are children of the most high. And therefore they made a distinction amongst Elohim and Eliyun. They made a distinction amongst God and the most high. So what the hell are you mad for when I say that you are God, when your damn Bible says that you are God? And it makes a distinction amongst God and the Most High. You are the God. So what the hell are you mad at me for? 
I don't even believe in this crazy shit they be talking. And I can make sense of it better than you. God is not rendered God in the Bible. He's rendered the most high. You are the one that was rendered to God. So it says here, of or from or like God. Or a God. So you see, it's a difference. Can be a God or you could come from God. If you believe you are a child of the most high, ye are God's. And all your children of the most high. If you believe you are a, an offspring of the creator, you should have no problem seeing yourself as divine. You should have no problem seeing yourself as having a divine status. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? So we're going to just track these words down. And to worship is the feeling or expression of reverence. So what does reverence mean? Deep respect for someone or something. So if I worship someone, I have reverence for them, which means I have deep respect for someone or something. I have deep respect for my wives. Deep respect. So if I worship my wife, that's only because I have a deep respect for her. Adoration, which means what? Deep love and respect. Here we go again with the word respect. So if you respect your woman enough, you create opportunities for her that's more than conducive for her to thrive in this existence. So when I say I worship my woman, you should understand it comes from a place of deep respect, not from a place of disrespecting your mythological deities or from a place of disrespecting the, the one and only, the eternal creator, the one and alone, the ahud and all that. Yo, listen, <clears throat> y'all can say all of that you want. I'm still not even in contradiction of the things that you would like to believe. I teach these things for a reason. Come on now. You, you, you want to see this? We want to do this. Belief and worship of a superhuman controlling power, especially a personal God or God's particular system of faith and worship. So look at this. Religion can also be a particular system of faith and worship. The amount of energy that we put into religion. I said that we made money our religion. We could be able to control our politics. And we have even more control of our spirituality. Religion is a pursuit or interest to which someone ascribes supreme importance. Who could be more important than our women? Who could be more important than our children? What could be more important than our black family? What are we really talking about here? What are we really talking about here? I thought you knew the truth about nationality. Man, stop looking for any damn thing to argue about. Now I got to go over here and bust your ass in, nat in nationality now? <clears throat> it's like, what happened to the attention span? Because all these Negroes talking about this nationality and wearing their top hat and fez. Someone please show me. Show me the millionaires that are wearing fez. Can they talk so much shit about everybody? How come the Negroes are the ones making all the monies? And then and then all the guys with their top hats and their tassels who know everything about what we need to do and how we need to become a body politic and they know about the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and have you have, and you have the right to your nationality clause one and you have the right to change your nationality clause two. I know with it. I'm with I'm know it. I'm with the shit. But that means nothing teaching my people right now because it will not pay the bills. It will not pay the bills. So why am I teaching my people this during this hour? What the hell you want me to do teaching this shit? What the hell is it going to do for our people right now? I know. Back to the money. This is part of the money. The reason, because this is the knowledge. This knowledge is all money. This is all money. No, no, no. I, say, I just speak with that conviction. I'm happy. I may sound wild aggressive because that's what this knowledge do. 
Because I don't like seeing us waste our time and I don't like our people encouraging us to waste our time. I'm not saying don't study Moorish history. I'm saying prioritize. Don't spend so much time on that and you, you are disconnected with what needs to be done in real time. You, you can appropriate some time to history. You could appropriate some time into your black philosophy. But don't misappropriate all your time when you turn around and your family's looking at you like, with all that knowledge you got, how are we going to get out of this situation? You're going to lose your mind. And the little faith that you think you have, you're going to lose that right along with it. Because that's what today is doing to us. All the spook gods that we've been praying to. All the organizations we've been making subscription to. All the spook gods we've been praying to. All the organizations we've been making subscriptions to. We're forced to reconsider what the heck was we doing with our time all these years. Because it, it brings us to this moment right now. Who was we listening to for hours on it? It brings us to this moment right now. Man, this is the stuff that's so annoying. He hasn't even talked about crypto yet because that's not what this damn thing is about. And if you was to purchase the class, you would see that it's part of the class. <laughs> you, you see what I'm saying? People and their inability to focus. Like, why would you attempt to point out something as if there's an error when we're still disseminating facts nonetheless? So now we're not talking about what you are already interested in, then we're not talking about nothing. Come on, don't come in here with that. I be wanting to block people just for that kind of stuff. But I, t I caution myself and say, you know, some of us ain't all the way up there. And our attention span is crazy short so i do my best not to fault my brothers and sisters for that kind of weird and ridiculous stuff but yo don't find fault when it's not necessary i agree with that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge i agree with that i totally agree with that The wicked has you in delusion, buddy. Block party time. It ain't even summer. And, and this guy got an early block party invite. <laughs> you feel me? I got to be like this. So money is the mode of worship. Yo, Mike Edwards, I'm not even in, in the mood, bro. That's, a, that's another cornball that's out there. Now, I'm going to ask him, don't do no stupidness on this chat. Because you see, he's somebody, let me tell y'all something. I've looked out for this brother several times. I'm not going to tell you how. I'm going to remain a gentleman. But when this brother couldn't rely on his own Hebrew brothers to look out for him, I have looked out for him several times. And this man posts videos about me constantly disrespecting me. And I still regard him as brother and I didn't even block him. This is not a time to play with me, King. Because I'm teaching. I don't know why you watch me with the hatred you have for me. Why you watch me? Live your life, bro. I can get your channel shut down just for you using my image. But I don't. I don't. Because I know you guys need to make money. All y'all. The little young Negro. I can get him shut down. Right? Right? While, he, while he's picking up momentum and doing his thing. But I don't believe in all that. So I let you guys eat over using my pictures. I let y'all eat posting my own children, posting my wives. I let you guys eat because I would hate to be in your situation. I would. So if, if it take for you guys to tear me down so YouTube can give you some coins so you can feed your family, that's a donation from me onto you. Because I don't even report you guys. I just let you guys do what you do. You think I don't see you? You think I don't know how to do it? You don't think I know how to make a complaint? That you are using my image for harassment? And I ain't give you permission to take my video content or none of my pictures? I could do that. But I don't. Because I know you guys need it. 
Because why would black people do that to each other? You Negroes need it. Y'all need it badly. <laughs> Y'all need it badly. Because I can't. I can't do posts and, and make your and mention your name in the title and talk about you for I know what you guys are doing that for. You need the hits, you need the views, you want to get subscribers, and you build a fraternity of hatred, and then guess what? With all the people you have subscribing to you, you can't even ask none of them for help. Because if you was able to, I know I'd be the last person you ask for help. And and when I helped you, just like them other Negroes. I helped you guys after you made infractions against me and my personality. I've made myself accountable as a brother to see to it that I help you guys. You feel me? It's a wild world where the religious people got me the brother Thank you, Anissa. You got me, the brother, who's not making subscriptions to any of these religions. You got me going out my way, helping you guys, and saying if they got to tear me down to get their come up, let them have it because it's all they have. And if a man that you have slandered, if a man that you have made fun of, mocked and ridiculed, can turn around and help you after you have done it, and then you still go back and you do it again? I still don't wish nothing for you but the best. Because I know it's a sad world you must live in when you can do that to people that have looked out for you. When your own loved ones couldn't be relied upon when you needed their help. So I don't got time to play. I don't got time to go back and forth with people making up stories. It doesn't work like that because I don't have hatred in my heart. I actually feel sorry for you brothers that that's what you do with your time when you talk about other men for such extended periods of time. And when I turn around and I see you got 10, 15, 20 videos on me and it's inside of two weeks, inside of one month, I feel for you brothers. I feel for you brothers that you don't have a woman in your life that tells you enough is enough. Get off that man's nuts. And of course we're talking about ethereal nuts because you will never be on my physical nuts. Now this is real talk because it's disgusting. I've never seen men do this for so long I never seen men talk about men for so long. It's just weird and disgusting. Cause I'm not in that type of time or that type of vibe. What kind of weird men that I know are struggling in this hour would even spend time heckling another man about what? Cause you in your religious feelings, you in your feelings Troll the government for telling churches, mosques, and synagogues to close their damn doors. Don't get mad at me. I asked, was it all a hoax? I asked the government, did you know you had everyone bullshitting this whole time? Because you acted like you wanted to give everybody their right to connect with the most high. And you over here talking about, you know, God bless America. And you put it on your money. God bless America and God we trust. You do all of that. But then when the coronavirus comes, you told the churches close their door. Mike had to enter the block party. I don't got time for that. <clears throat> He's too immature. You never know. This guy's a grown man. He's way too immature. That's what we do with this. I don't have time for that. You go on your you go on your page and you continue to talk about me like you normally do and pretend that those people are listening to you because they like you. You go over there and you keep pretending like they want to hear you because they're interested in you. When you get your views because you talk about me. This is a sad world we live in. <laughs> sad world we living in with, with men that's over 40 years old. 
But I thank you, family. Uh, remember, class is tomorrow. I am Brother Polite. App. <laughs> Word. Brother Polite. Go to I am Brother Polite. App. It's all good. It don't. It don't. I w I was done cooking. I was straight. I was closing out with a little venting and expression because I just doing the knowledge twenty four seven full time and then creating the lesson plan that I gotta do for that I gotta do for tomorrow. Motivating brothers in the that's incarcerated and connecting with them. Writing books, being a father, being a husband several times over. Running my businesses, doing my investing. It's a lot. So sometimes you need to be able to say something to somebody. You guys will understand me better than anybody else because y'all see it. Y'all see it for what it is. No amount of positive information you could put up. I don't smoke no weed. I would if, if, that was the, if I was in that culture, I'm sure this would call for it, but... I'm afraid to lose my mind doing any type of drugs and I hear you it's recreational and it's good and all that but first of all if I was going to smoke it once the government got a hold of it I'm gonna fall back because they already doing everything in their power to effeminize black men you see what they doing on YouTube that's some effeminist shit that, that would never happen to the to the ancient man that when our, our fathers and our father's fathers if they had the internet they wouldn't behave like that as men back and forth with each other that shit is some suspect stuff. That's suspect. I'm in a feminine. You can't say nothing to them without them doing a video and crying and complaining about how they feel about another man. Watch our men. They got they wear their hair long and they constantly fixing their hair when they doing the live stream. Yo, I'm, something weird's going on. So no, I don't want to. I don't want to smoke their weed. I'm not eating their dairy. I'm not, I don't I don't rock with none of that. I don't trust nothing that they have to offer us to the best of my ability. And what I do gotta trust, I'm still going in there with fair skepticism. That's why I deliver all my children in the house. That's why I homeschool my children. That's why I employ aquaponics. That's right, aquaponics. Grow my own food best way I can. Within the city, like I do what I can do. I don't, I don't drive myself crazy, but I do what I can do because I don't trust them. Here's another idiot. You getting out of here. I can't believe people are being idiots after hours. It's, it's 12 midnight. It's too late to be an idiot at this hour. What are you doing at this hour being an idiot? <laughs> it's just weird. <laughs> Block. Class time tomorrow is 6 p.m. Eastern time. You can purchase the class at IamBrotherPolite.app. Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I'll need some power. I, I really appreciate it. Yeah. You can, you can inbox me, sister. <laughs> Yo, word. They being idiots after hours. <laughs> I just don't get it. It, it got to be a time when you clock out. My goodness. Nah, it was a great build. I was not, I actually stayed on here way longer than I planned. I actually was planning to talk for about 20, 30 minutes, but I started going in and having a vibe. Don't worry, we're going to pick up the vibe tomorrow. <laughs> Make sure you have your notepad and everything. I wish with my fan page i'm able to bring people in they need to stop bsing and allow people to come in on the fan page on facebook because then it'd be lit already purchased thanks bert henry for purchasing the course i will not let you down the class is 99 dollars. tomorrow is at 6 p.m you're gonna love it yeah i'm the brother that be Preaching on the streets. <laughs> yeah. What did he say to get me off the script? Absolutely nothing. I was already done, like I said. And I spent the last stages of me speaking to really highlight what we have to veer away from. It's a teaching moment. I was only supposed to talk for 20, 30 minutes. I exceeded that and started going in. He was never in here when I desisted from that level of education. 
he wasn't even in here. He just got in here, to my knowledge. He might have been here the whole damn time. Freaking Negro. And these people are so aggressive. He's over there probably creating a new page, triple space in his name so he can come back here and troll. Because that's what he does with his time. This guy is sick. <laughs> He's sick. Pay me. I have more knowledge than polite. Yeah, his name is Downs Nashawn Williams. Everybody make sure you go and contact him. He says he has more knowledge than me, so you should pay him. Just, just give you the shout out you're looking for, my brother. But next time, realize you should stand on your own too. You shouldn't have to tell people, give me money because I'm better than another man. If people don't realize your worth, what makes you think they'll realize it by you devaluing another no, black man? That has worked, clearly. It's too late to be an idiot. It's after hours. It's, it's past midnight. It's just not making sense. <laughs> this is weird. <laughs> Y'all crazy. Where are these guys coming from with this? <clears throat> yes, you're supposed to get the, the link in the video. Check your email. The second you purchase, you're supposed to get that data. Man, go to bed. You can't give this much fire information in one day. I hear that. <clears throat> if I use the Zoom app, am I going to be able to use Facebook and get multiple people in? That's what I'm talking about. I want to be able to use Facebook and get multiple people in because it's a whole different vibe. Facebook is like the mature vibe. I like Instagram, but that I got to turn up a certain way when I'm on Instagram. He's selling knowledge. Laugh out loud. And so what you call the people who got $80,000 debt for student loan? Again, it's way too late to be an idiot. It is after hours. Come on, Greg. Put it together, bro. Don't be over here getting mad at me, but you was never mad at the white man for putting people in a $100,000 debt, $20,000 debt, $80,000 debt. And that's the, that's the stuff you paid for. And they charge you that knowing they ain't really teach you nothing in high school. They ain't feel no way about not teaching you credit. They ain't feel no way about not teach you how to fill out your first homeowner application. But you love the devil because he gives you nothing. That's something that Elijah Muhammad said, and I agree with that. I know he says, Zoom, you can have up to a thousand people. But can you do it on Facebook? That's what I want to know. Word up. Oh, you can use Zoom in collaboration with Facebook? I need to figure that out. That'd be so fire, because then we can, because what I want to do, I want to bring you guys on so you can ask your questions. Because we can get you to ask your questions, we could be lit. You rather play for class than Jordans, I hear that. Yeah, doesn't matter. So long as you purchase the class, it'll be available to you. Uh, if you missed the live session, doesn't matter. You're going to receive it in your email ASAP. Wow. Oh, you can only drop the Zoom link. Thanks, Mike. We got to get this Zoom information right. $14 Zoom subscription allows you to go on Facebook and you can have others on with you. Man, I'm just getting both sides of the information right now. <laughs> you telling me no, you telling me yes, you telling me no, you telling me yes. Only one thing to do now is to ask somebody in my house to research it. Because I ain't. <laughs> Hydroponics is real. Yeah, we got to talk about that one day. It's $54. Facebook group plus Zoom equals meet and notification. <laughs> That's what's up, man. I'm glad you're listening, Rod Williams.
It's all good. It's all good. Yes, that's our CRM. That's our credit restoration microwave. You go to brotherpolite45 at gmail.com. You leave your full name and your phone number if you're interested in us removing all the negative items off your report, adding positive items to your report, boosting your credit score, and then creating an opportunity for you to get five to six figures upward after all that is done. So we remove the debt and then we add value. That is a 3K process. $3,000 process. You're interested in the credit restoration microwave, you go to brotherpolite45 at gmail.com. For the course, you're going to go to IamBrotherPolite.app to purchase the course. The course is $100. Peace to the brother from Chicago, Desmond. Peace to you. Yeah, that's people's job to distract. But we on the path. We got class tomorrow. Did the Instagram stream show love over there? Did the Facebook stream show love over here? I'm about to just deviate and watch something this evening. Take a nice cold shower. Keep the skin tight. Do a little workout. And get to it. I'm excited to talk to you guys tomorrow. Very excited about it. I'm looking forward to it. I love you guys, man. You guys give me my motivation to share information. So long as I know I'm being heard, it's everything. I really appreciate it. I can't tell you enough. I never want to take you all for granted. You helped me identify my purpose. Yes, I said yes. We could eliminate student loans, my brother. Yes. You guys helped me qualify my purpose. Yes, you can replay tomorrow's class. You definitely can. You can catch it live. You can play it after the fact. You, you're you going to own it when it's all said and done. You definitely have it. All you got to do is purchase the class and you are in. You're in the in crowd. <clears throat> you're the best teacher I've ever had. Who wrote that? Thank you, Rob Williams. I appreciate that. Yeah, we got to talk about oil. I don't know if I'm going to do it in the classes. I'll do it in the free classes. Wow, this is gold. Thank you, Jess. What I was looking for. Ashley, I don't want to mess up your last name. It's like an accent or something. But thank you so much for that sentiment, Ashley. I appreciate that. Man, I appreciate all the appreciation. See, that's the way to close out. That's that's the vibes. Yeah, I need more network helpers. How about you help me out? <laughs> How about you help out, Enrique? You bring up the idea, I put you to it. People be coming to me with business ideas. Yo, you should do this. You should, I might, if you want to run the business, if you don't see me doing it, and you see a space for it, I'll integrate what you got going on with what I got going on. Because if it didn't exist, I wouldn't have made money from it in the first place. So I don't mind giving you a nice commission. I don't mind using my network. Just come correct and already be situated. Don't come to me with just the idea and a dollar. I can't do it because I'm a busy man. You build it up enough and it already makes sense. You got the ability to do the things that you say you can do. And I'm going to put you to task in real time. You're going to have to move like you never moved before. That's how I am. Well, I'm from Brooklyn, and I'm from East New York. I'm from the 90s. I'm from the 9 ounce. Recap? Don't worry about the recap. Just play it back. Play it back, sister, because I'm about to be out of here. Don't worry about the recap. Fast at least two, three times a week. <laughs> I'll be fasting. It's so normal. My family be having to remind me to eat sometimes. Because I, I be working and I be meditating and I be visualizing. I be doing so much different things. Mentally. I spend a, like 95% of my day in my head. Literally. Right, don't worry. Just got to find the business opportunities that exist. 
Yeah. 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 Y
I love y'all too, man. Good energy, good energy. I hope to see you all in class tomorrow. I'm excited, man. You got me feeding for class. <laughs> it's great. That's the, that's the way I connect with the people, man. I love it. I love when I'm doing this, and then class is just another type of vibe. But I love both of them. I love this vibe, and I love that vibe. But I like the class vibe because it's like, in my my worldview tells me that the way I'm doing class is ideally the way it should be done in school. It's how I feel personally. I'm not telling you that that's law, but I just I just love the vibe. I do my best to see. What's a great approach towards sharing information that is not common, so that's what makes it complex. If it was common, of course, it wouldn't be complex. So it's technically not complex, but what kind of terms can I put the information in so it can suit you the best, so you can use it in real time? Because we don't have you, we don't have years for you to process the data. We got to get you into the data in real time. Yes, once you have the class, you have it for good. You have it forever. Thank you, Yako. Well, peace to the family. Hope to see you in class. I am Brother Polite. I will see you in class. Let me say that. I am Brother Polite. I act. Remember, I'm too smart to be broke, and it costs way too much money to be poor. This has to be our mantra. And love is law, and family is business. And always remember, I read and write for a living. You can be doing any of a number of things, but that's what I chose to do. And I actually picked the right one. It's a blessing, because if you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. And some people are so poor, all they have is money. We just put all these things together to put things into perspective because words are a GPS to reality. It's going to be a great day tomorrow and every day thereafter because the last time our economy looked like this in the 1920s marked the time in American history where the most millionaires were born. This is the second coming, but they're going to be darker this time. <laughs> Peace to the family. See you in class tomorrow.